Hello and welcome to Trailer Fitters Toolbox once again guys and girls. It's about time we stopped hiding away in the cupboard and saying old Land Rovers were better and start looking at technology and how we can deal with diagnosing it. And today we've got ourselves a Discovery 2 with an ABS fault. Well actually it's got the three Amigos on it. The lights are up, traction control, heel descent and ABS. Got the diagnostics tool here from uh, Britpart, it's fairly new, the Lynx diagnostic interface. Kit here in the box is not handheld, it's actually an interface device. It plugs into your diagnostic uh, OBD socket on your vehicle, which is this plug here. And in the case of this Land Rover Discovery, the socket would be up here usually, but as you can see it's fallen out and it's actually underfoot. I've cleaned this up and I'm going to plug it in. You need the use of a laptop with this one or a PC and it has to be a Windows system unfortunately. However, I chucked this in and loaded up the software within about two minutes. Okay, well the issues basically with these vehicles is that you've got to have an interface now to be able to talk to the ECU. Using a laptop with an interface device means that you actually have more facilities available. I'm actually no stranger to ABS faults Part of my job as a heavy goods vehicle technician is to rectify ABS and EBS, which is electronic braking system, faults. Standard practice is to go in, see what codes you have there, wipe them, and then get on and see if you can regenerate the codes to see what the actual faults are. So, what I've pulled up here is a lot of faults, as you can see, sensors, shuttle valves, exhaust plausibility raise and they're all historical. This I want to clear, purge and then see which are the relevant faults rather than something that might have just happened once. Also found looking at the fault codes for the engine I had an open circuit that was logged for injector number one. Instead of going into a panic and thinking oh I've got loads of problems, first thing to do is to wipe all the fault codes so we don't have any ghosts in there. What I'm left with is this which is on the ABS system which is current. The vehicle's actually static now and it's saying it's either got an impedance, which is resistance, which is either too high or too low, and it's also telling me the position, center left hand front. This unit actually does a, a live data readout and you see there's a list here of stuff it'll do. I've just chucked some of these on here to show that with the engine running, it's reading uh, sensor, pressure, RPM and voltage on the alternator. Now this is fantastic, you can actually load up quite a bit of data and watch it and record it as well. So, the most logical thing to do is actually take it for a test drive and watch some figures live. Four sensors, four wheels, so they can all be monitored and recorded all at the same time under different load conditions and wheel speeds. what I'm getting here is voltage that's generated by the sensors and you can see there is a dropout on sensor LF left front. As I was driving it actually dropped to zero so going back to our brake faults that is current and that is right I do have a problem with the wiring rather than an air gap. What's also confirming this is the faults will not clear which means it's persistent so the uh, vehicles owned by Brian Rust, haulage company, and one of his fitters has been assigned to change the ABS sensor on the front wheel. We did check it and unplugged it to make sure that another fault didn't come up on the readout. So when it's unplugged it's saying exactly the same thing. All right, so we've confirmed it's that side. With this model of Discovery you have to remove the caliber, and this is what James is going to do. You also have to remove the disc so you can get to the sensor which is fitted into the swivel housing just here. It's a pain in the ass job. Once the sensor's been refitted, we're having a look to see if the lights go out. So there you go. That is not a persistent fault anymore. So the next thing to do is actually wipe the fault codes that's stored in this vehicle and then take it for a decent test drive to see if there's any more faults that can be generated while the vehicle's operating. This is always the best part of the diagnostic testing. Okay, so the faults cured. Luckily, there was just a wheel sensor. This system here is very good. Not only does it have diagnostic facilities, but you can also actuate certain components within the system if it's controlled by the ECU, one of those being the power brake bleed. 
So this is supplied by Paddock. You can get this. You can either get the professional version or you can get a home one just locked to your vehicle, which is a lot cheaper. Any inquiries about this system, have a look on the Lynx website, and there's a link below in the video here. Okay, well I'm actually impressed with this tool. I've taken it from the point of view that I've never used it before. The only failings with this sort of system is you have to understand the terminology, you have to understand the systems, but as you have equipment like this, you can learn and you can grow with it. You have plenty of opportunities to monitor. In my job as an HGV technician, I do a lot of ABS sensor faults and this straight away I understand is a very powerful tool.